I am going to go into SOPs now. So SOPs are what we use for 3D geometry, a, a different type of data altogether. And um, let's just start with a, uh, the most basic, which is a torus. I guess it's not the most basic, but it's common. Famous donut. Now with 3D space, uh, the viewer becomes a lot more or more important. Um, so let's turn on this viewer um, with this little viewer active flag. And now you can actually, you can tumble using the left mouse button and zoom uh, with the middle and to pan around using the, the left, uh, sorry, the right mouse button. And if you ever lose your, your donut, you can just press H to home it and it'll come right back to the middle. Now if you right click in this viewer, there's other options um, because it's a different type of, uh, of viewer you're working with. And um, one of the most common one would be uh, to toggle wireframe mode to actually look at uh, how your service is built, which is the W key. So you can inspect the wireframe model, Let's take a look at it, wireframe shaded and, and wireframe. And another option, because these viewers have so much more information to give than just a 2D image, uh, we have a whole dialog called display options that you can open to, um, to control what you're looking at. So, here, so what if I wanted to see where all the points were? I can turn on points, which is this first option here and you look at all the points and inspect it. Um, or point numbers, if you need to know the numbers of each point. Point normals. <coughs> normals are the direction of the face is, is, is pointing, or the point is pointing. So um, everything has a direction that it's facing, usually. OK. And a bunch of other. Um, stuff that's not so uh, UV coordinates if it has it. This one doesn't, so I don't see anything. I'm going to home this. Uh, same as uh, tops, we have parameters that control all these things. So let's uh, make another generator. Uh, this one uh, will be uh, sphere sop. So uh, I'll show you the primitive type here. Uh, most of these generators all have a primitive type. Um, the default, uh, I'll turn in wireframe so you can see how it's built. The default one is mesh, which is made out of rows and columns. So here's my rows, how, how many rows you got and how many columns there are. But if you take the primitive type and turn it to polygon, it doesn't use rows and columns at all. It uses something called frequency, and it's made up of triangles now instead of quads. So these are different types of geometry you can work with, um, depending on what you want to do. Um, I'd recommend just working with mesh and polygons because they're very fast for uh, real time. But there's also, if you're um, trying to do something specific, you can use NURBS or Bezier. So if I go to NURBS, you will get um, uh, something which you control with U order and V order. Um, but if you're animating stuff with NURBS, it's very heavy uh, on the CPU and not very good for real time. So uh, we typically recommend uh, Polygon and Mesh. Let's look at this. Um, we can one common uh, SOP we always use to bring things together is is the merge SOP. So I'm going to drop down a merge SOP and connect both of these to it. And all this does is it brings both of the geometries together so they can be operated on together like a, a group. So if I was to put a transform SOP after this. And I now move move them in uh, x and y, or let's say I scale them. You know they scale together. But if I have a transform sop in here on just on this guy, and I scale it, you know I'm just going to scale that one. So this is procedural modeling. Um, uh, when you get into heavy duty modeling, we, we we recommend you know using your modeling tool of choice and bringing your models in through FBX 
Um, but for simple primitives and shapes, if you're going to design some things that are maybe particle emitters or, uh, or masks and stuff like that, uh, this is where this stuff is really handy. The thing with uh, SOPs that you have to be aware of is that they are calculated on the CPU. They're not GPU based. So if I crank up the numbers to um, you know, thousands of rows and thousands of columns, the, and you try to animate that, it's going to slow down your real-time performance. I can show you that by... Maybe I'll animate this. Uh, I'm going to use a LFO chop. LFO. And of course, whenever I export, I want to use a null. So I add a null after my LFO. And this is a bit fast, so I'll just turn down the frequency a bit. OK. And now I'm going to export this to the scale parameter. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to still use the viewer to do this. Open the viewer and drag to the scale Y. I don't like how it's going into negative territory because the scale flips it. So I'll offset uh, offset the LFO by one. Okay. So I did this because I want to show you how uh, animating something in SOPS gets very expensive when you have more geometry. Right now, if I middle mouse click on it. You can see that the cook time, or how long it takes uh, touch to calculate this, is 0.2 milliseconds. So that's not too much. Um, uh, but when you're running at 60 frames a second, you only have 16 milliseconds per frame to do all your real-time work. You, if you want to stay at 60, you only have 16 milliseconds. So think of this as like spending some of that 16, uh, 16 milliseconds. Now, if I crank up the crank up the resolution of this stuff, uh, let's make this uh, 200 by 400. Now it's taking six milliseconds, right? So that's, you're using uh, over a third of, or about a third of your, of your calculation time per frame just to animate this guy. So it's not, so um, I, I just went back to my, uh, my torus and I really cranked up the rows and columns. So it, if you look at it in wireframe, it's, it's super dense, right? very dense, which isn't realistic for this. But if you brought in a, a model Tyrannosaurus Rex or something and, and you tried to animate it in SOPs, you might have this issue where you have that many points and it's, it's very slow to animate. So you just have to be aware of this um, and uh, try to use geometry as sparingly as you can get away with while it still has the quality of look you want. So, um, so yeah. SOPs are on the CPU and are a little bit uh, slow to animate. Uh, another one you'll often use is uh, the grid SOP or the rectangle SOP. And all they do is basically give you a grid. Or um, in, in the rectangles case, a rectangle SOP is just four points. But this is how you might make point sprites or things in 3D space that hold images or textures and videos. Um, uh, so you'll use grid a lot, um, just to texture with a movie um, and move it around in 3D space. So let's look at this grid. Um, one. Actually, let's make a. I'll just take this off the sphere. Another fun uh, SOP, <coughs> which is a filter, is the noise SOP. We have noise in every operator family because we love noise. Um, and let's take the sphere and put it into the noise op, and it starts applying noise to all the point positions, and just basically deforming your 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 text uh, your geometry. And this also can get a little expensive. Right now, it's it's cheap. It's only uh, two point two milliseconds. But if I make this this sphere um, much more complex it's going to slow down quite a bit. So just be aware of uh, cook times when you're dealing with SOPs. And the noise, you can control a few different things. You can control um, 
if I select noise, the point position, or you could maybe just do the color. It's applying <coughs> noise to the color. Uh, point normals make the light react differently. And if I go back to position, this is an interesting point. You notice that it's deforming and everything, uh, but the light, the light position is a hot spot right there and not, not moving with the deformations. And that's because um, the normals aren't being recalculated. And normals are what um, the lighting engine uses to determine how the light is uh, reflected off the surfaces. Because it, basically a normal is the, the angle that your, uh, your geometry face is pointing. So a very easy way of getting uh, normals is to use the att attribute create SOP. There's a few other SOPs that have it. But it just adds, allows us to compute normals or compute tangents. So when I turn on normals, now you can see that the light is now properly computed based on the position of the, of the noise. So that's just something to, uh, to consider. I'll use the grid. It's, it's a better idea. So here uh, we have a group SOP. You can drop down a group SOP. And uh, basically, all, this group SOP is made up of a whole bunch of points, which uh, if I turn on the numbers here, you can see all these points, right? So just, just be aware that they're all going from 0 to however many rows I have, 0 to 19, 20 to 39. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, Wait, I'm just going to turn off those numbers. It's a little uh, hard to look at. In the group SOP, I can uh, select points. I want to select the points and use the number here. So right now it's selecting them all. But let's say I just want to select uh, the first 40. So 0 to 39. 0 to 39. And it selects those. All right. Now this is now being put into the group called group 1. So let's call it just something different, my group. And if I middle mouse click on it, it says uh, there's one point group uh, with 40 points in it. All right. So now if you want to move these independently, you can uh, almost every filter SOP has a group option. So I can just say my group, and I can scale them in X and move them down in Y. Okay. FBX and OBJ is supported. Uh, FBX is better. Um, and you can just, um, you can either go file, import, um, or can you, you can drag and drop to onto the uh, network editor. Uh, Here's the time. I knew there was a Tyrannosaurus in my in my history. Okay, so there we go. So there he is. Um, and I just drag and drop the file in here, and then inside it uh, it does a bunch of stuff. And you can uh, I have to go a little deeper, um, but here's the eyes, here's the teeth, stuff like that. So okay, so. Um, that's how you do that. You can also import animation, lights, cameras, stuff like that, and uh, it'll all be laid out in a in a hierarchy for you. Okay. Uh, one more quick quick thing is uh, this. I'll make a new sphere SOP, and you can follow here because um, this will be simple and fun. Uh, I just made a sphere SOP, and I took the columns down to twenty, so it's twenty and twenty. And now uh, I right-click on the output and select Particle SOP. Particle is on uh, the third column, almost at the bottom. Now you can see these particles are being emitted. So to make them a little easier to see, we can turn the viewer active. With this this uh, little uh, star at the bottom. and press P and turn on the uh, point display. So now basically uh, the particle SOP uses uh, the whatever we have connected to it 
And from every point on it, uh, from every uh, point of information on this on the sphere, it emits a particle from it. And it just goes through the points in order. That's why you see it wrapping around the uh, the sphere like that. So you can go to the particles page on the particle SOP and play with uh, these parameters here, like the birth. If you want to slow down how quickly they're being uh, the particles are being born. Or you can uh, crank that up past 100 or 200 or whatever you want. It's even faster. Life expectancy is how uh, long they will live. If you want them very short, these are in, this is in seconds, by the way. So one is one second. Um, and then they die. If you put it up to 10 seconds, they will be around for 10 seconds and then they die. Life variance is how much randomness there is in that one second. So if I had uh, uh, back to three seconds, um, and a life variance of one, it'll it'll be anywhere from zero to, to three seconds life. There's mass and drag and stuff like that. Um, and then you have a forces page, which you have a few, just a few basic forces. Uh, the there's wind and uh, an external force. So if I want them to all this to float over to the right, I can put a one in TX and they float away. And then if I want to give them some turbulence, I can uh, add some turbulence. Let's say a little turbulence in Y. Now if you see some uh, particles sitting around and just looking like they're dead, sometimes the particle system will need a, a restart because you've been playing with the parameters and the numbers are out of sync. So you go to the state page and there's a reset button uh, at the very bottom. And you just press the pulse button, and it resets the whole particle system. Reset on or reset off the pulse uh, If you hold it on, it'll just hold until you let it go. But if you press pulse, it just gives it a quick reset pulse. And um, I, that's about it for SOPs. Unless anyone has any questions about dealing with these, um, we'll be using them throughout the next couple days. So. Um, We'll be getting more familiar with them, but if you have any questions. And is it possible to switch geometry as well? Yes. Um, there is actually, um, uh, we call it a script SOP, um, which uses Python script right here. So mm -hmm. I can show you an example we have in the palette. It's under, is it super formula? <coughs> this. This, if you look inside, is done with a uh, couple of script SOPs. And then there's a, a nice script there that's making it. So if I, if I go up to the top of this component, I just drag this in from the generators in the palette, yeah. super formula. There's these parameters here that we have set. So um, okay. the one thing uh, with these rest of these flags um, is this, this one is called compare. And this is kind of nice because uh, it shows you the input. And you see the sphere that I have going in that's feeding the particle system? It shows you uh, a little uh, template of what that is. So you can kind of see how your particles are being generated from that. So I find that very handy. So any... Uh, <laughs> faster, slower, faster, slower. Um, uh, any other questions about SOPs before I move on?